we were looking at all the crows down at the other end of the cemetery, and I told them about what happened with you when the crows flew up in the air and you got scared. <laughs> I told them, I said, did you know a flock of crows? And any, anything more than three crows is called a murder. And she was like, what? I said, you didn't even heard of that expression? Like, there's a flock of geese, there's a, there's a, you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of horses, they all have different names. It's a flock of crows, it's called a murder. I said, you have to get in touch with your record around the call. <laughs> in history, which is really, I never went to college, but in high school I got these uh, kind of certificates of how fascinated I was in the history, especially at Revolutionary Time. And that was pretty interesting on how people were treated around here in New York when the British had kind of, in, were in control of New York. It's you know, like a lot of these people that are buried here, they lived through that. There's some really interesting stories about him because they believed that he was murdered and they had his body exhumed and then they had to put back with them because they found, they found no evidence of murder. But they found him face down on his desk, his face in a pillow. Um, he had a lot of money. Until this day, the highest amount of money ever extorted from one single person in the Guinness Book of World Records is this man. $17 million because he didn't believe in banks. So he kept his money in lobster traps around his house. If they could have took their money with them, yeah. they would have took it. Yeah. But since you can't take it with you, they kind of advertised it. Yeah. And this is what they, this is how they did it. Uh -huh. There was this, there was this whole big like, um, like trend, and everybody wanted to know why people became wanted to be buried like mummies, and there's just like this whole big trend. That's why that's there. The sphere is the soul. That's yeah. the ball. All right. Vultures wings, they're vultures wings. Wings carry the soul and the serpents is, is the underworld. That would be the empire. So the wings carry the soul to the underworld. Years ago, I was kind of like a the local hoodlum. <laughs> um, I was long head, I drove a fast car, wore a leather jacket. Um, so I was kind of like the bad boy. And, um, a couple of times I had gotten myself arrested and I kind of said, oh, man, you know, I got to stop, I got to work, I got to do something. So my father gave me an opportunity to work in the cemetery. He goes, well, try it, it ain't going to kill you. So I says, okay, I just got out of high school. And I says, all right, what the hell? It's outside, it's better than working in the city. You know, so I got my hair cut and stuff like that. I started to look decent. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, and then I was only going to stay here for a while. I wound up staying here for 30 something years. I was in third, uh, stage three of colon cancer. And uh, you know what? My belief, a little bit of what I, when I was in the hospital and I was thinking about this is the end. Um, because for a while there, it was kind of touch and go. And when you have some, when you have, when you're terminally ill, or you think you're terminally ill, a lot of stuff races through your head. And the first thing that races through your head is death. Uh, I have, I, I got this out of an old book I, I was reading years ago, and it's it's a little quote that I saw in in a picture, and it says it says the quote says, "You haven't really lived." until you've almost died. And you know what, I take that pretty seriously. I take that pretty seriously.